well, uh, as I see, uh, it's hard to say as the, both uh, those uh, judgments, as I say, just a little bit go to extreme. So as I see, I still uh, highly uh, recommended the idea basically integrated breeding. Basically used to be the, basically the genetics information accumulated very slow. So that's the breeding just based on the traditional experience. So at that time, breeding is a science plus art. But, but today with the quick advance of genomics technology, today so you can see today's breeding, it could be genomics. No, today's breeding could be just the science plus engineering. Yeah, we, that's something new. Yeah, so that, that, that's not based on who we're leading who. Uh, that's due to the advance of the technology. So give us opportunity. We can do the breeding quicker and uh, better. So as I see, that's opportunity the genomics yeah, technology give us today. So uh, we, we should uh, let both sides working together. As our target is the same, breeding, get some new cultivars, better cultivars, higher yield, yeah, better nutrition for our future. So as I see, the opportunity is there. So we should work in together. This is not who we're leading who. Basically, both sides need to work in together, do their best. Yeah, uh, for me, as my background, I, I, I trained, uh, I used to train as a breeder. So if you ask my suggestion or my judgment, I would say I would still focus on the breeding. Focus on the breeding. Yeah, if you just put all your uh, resources to the, those uh, uh, technology, I think technology improve very fast, uh, advance very fast. So there's already a lot of the inf uh, institutes, even universities or even companies, they focus on their better technology. So as I see, the way, if you ask my ideas, I, I will think yeah, we should put our, most of our money focus on the applying the technology, not just to focus on technology itself. That's that one, that will use a lot of money and also quick change too, too fast. You basically, if you don't have very good uh, base to do that work, to, do, to develop new tools, uh, new tax, so it's that, that was, yeah, that's where you cost so much money, but uh, at the last maybe you just got a little bit. So I, my suggestion is the first, still focus on application of this, this new technology. Take advantage of the opportunity provided by this new technology. That's what I, I want to suggest it. But at the same time, there's also some new discover opportunities as once you use, the new, use this new technology to do it. So uh, as an institute like the ECRISAT, uh, I, I, I always think yeah, you will not also totally neglect the opportunity of the new discoverer. So, so the, uh, first, the balance between two sides, that's important. And uh, for me, as I'm, I used to be trained as a breeder, so I still like to focus more of application of this new technology, and their target is uh, new cultivars. Well, if you ask me, uh, I give a hundred percent. What's the distribution of those hundred percent of my resources? I think within two or three years. I mean, the near future, or maybe just within two years, I'll give the. Um, genomics or basically application of this new technology and even more resources. So I'll give them like the 60%, something like that, or $60 to focus on their, this new technology and the use of these new technologies. As uh, I, we used to be, give us nearly all of our resources on the traditional breeding. So within the near future, I think two or three years, I'll focus more on use of the new technology take advantage of the opportunities created by, by the, these new technologies. But in the future, the long term, I think that's a balance. As our final target is the same, new cultivars yeah, for the world and also for the institute itself. So I think for the long term, maybe just yeah, you, you need to let it go to the balance, like the 50-50 the or even in the future, maybe we will be focused more and more as the technology is more already mature and everyone has their idea and know how to use it. So at that time, definitely the field work, the phenotype work, the real breeding projects. You, you, you can say that's traditional breeding, 
but you, you also could say, no, no, that's not traditional breeding. That's basically a combined new technology plus the traditional breeding efforts. At that time, that one should be, will be take the yeah, uh, most part of our resources. As that's, that's the real possibility to give us new cultivars, not the breeding in the lab as, 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 as a breeder. I think that's untrue, yeah. Definitely the new cultivars came, or, yeah, were come from the field, not come from the lab. I'm pretty optimistic, so my answer is within five years. Uh, this afternoon, I will give, uh, I will give a lecture about what are the practice of the molecular marker-assisted breeding uh, in BGI. Yeah, even like an institute like ours, we don't have very good experience of the breeding. Uh, just within four or five years, just four years, or sometimes some, some species less than four years, we have so good progress. Yeah, the advance is so quick, something unbelievable for traditional breeders. So as I see, that basically, yeah, the, uh, my answer is just within the near, near future. Within five years, you will see a real advance, and some advance or some progress will be amazing for the traditional breeders. Basically, as this also uh, caused me, the, let me remember, you see, when I came here to give a speech, let's see, if I'm not wrong, it should be the 2011, or yeah, 20, yeah 2011 at that time. I said, well, it's a new era. Basically, we, we, for the old breeders, we catch a good time. That's a good era for our career. And uh, with this new technology, the breeding will go so fast. And even for those neglected species, some species of which we have very, very few uh, genetics information, and those could be very time consuming. But now we can do it very fast. That's good news for the older breeders. And also that's good news for the people living in those arid and semi-arid areas. As their germplasm already adapted to those environment could be recognized and could be utilized. It yeah, could be utilized very efficiently. And the, not just the quantity, but also the quality of the new cultivars could be improved so fast. That's real good news for the people living in those areas. So at that time, I think just, 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 just if I'm not wrong, it's 2011. Now just uh, no more than f f four years, yeah. But you can see the Rajiv, yeah, his breeding projects, yeah, not just the pigeon pea, but also the uh, chickpea, yeah, grows very fast. We not just uh, accumulate a lot of information, not just a lot of data, but a new advanced lines yeah, based on this new information. So as I see, based on our experience, uh, our experience on foxtail millet, on rice, yes, just within near future, you will see new cultivars could go to the farmer. As basically currently, we, we, we are not counting the breeding procedure based on the traditional uh, way, like how many years, like the five years or eight years, normally six years. That's some uh, reasonable uh, judgment. You will get some significant progress. Now we count on is just how many generation. Normally five to six generation, you will get significant progress. So I'm relatively optimistic about this question. Just within, five, just within the near future, you will see yeah, tremendous change. Yeah.